The Mutual Broadcasting System presents a special broadcast recorded from Hamilton, Bermuda. Yesterday, 18 Air Force flyers were rescued from the rough Atlantic waters some 385 miles northeast of Bermuda. They have been adrift for 75 and a half hours since last Wednesday when their B-29 airplane ran out of fuel and was crash-landed. Rubber life rafts were launched, but two crewmen were unable to clear the wreckage and went down with the ditched aircraft. One of history's most intensive air searches was put into effect. Finally, yesterday afternoon, a B-17 rescue plane, piloted by Lieutenant Edward Lynch, sighted the life rafts bobbing in the stormy seas. But here by transcription from Bermuda is Miss Edith Mezeran, mutual news correspondent, as she picks up the story of the rescue. They were within one mile of the rafts and boat before they saw the survivors. They circled around and pulled over to the collapsible boat. The sea was rough, very rough, with waves 50 to 60 feet high. They cast lines and 18 went down to the boat and each person was carefully hoisted to the hider. They had all the men aboard ship at approximately 3.45 Bermuda time. The survivors could not use their legs. Their feet were badly swollen and cramped from exposure. Dr. Eric Lee, surgeon commander of the Magnificent, was brought aboard the ship to give medical aid. It was deemed inadvisable to transfer the men to the Magnificent because of their condition. The survivors reported that they had seen the planes that could not attract their attention as most of their flares had been lost when the boat capsized. Three of the men had to have intravenous treatment for shock and dehydration. The rest suffered salt water burns, pus, and bruises. We left the Haida and went to the United States Air Force Hospital at Kinley Field for an interview with the men who had survived this ordeal. Their spirits were fine, they were grateful and happy, and not once did they feel it would not be found. Sadness came on their faces and voices only when they spoke of the two who lost their lives, and in all cases said that if the seas had not been so rough, they might have had a chance of being saved. Corporal Raymond Britt, of Arlington, California, had little chance of being saved. For when the tail of the ship broke off, the water rushed in, and he went down immediately. Private First Class H. Dobson of Decatur, Illinois, seemed to have a little difficulty inflating his May West, and he was only 50 feet away from the raft when the seas were so rough there was not a chance for the men to get to him. When asked what they would do as soon as they were able to leave the hospital, Lieutenant Colonel John Grable, Jr., the plane commander said the first thing they wanted to do was to go to church and then have a little fun. And now for the voices of several of these survivors, here is Mutual's news correspondent, Charles Warren. I wonder if you tell us your name now, will you? Uh, Captain Jones. Uh, Captain, you were uh, captain of the B-29? Uh, no, uh, I was the co-pilot. Uh, Colonel Grable, the aircraft commander, Lieutenant... Um, Oliver, the pilot, and I was the co-pilot and the staff weather officer for the group when we would have arrived in England. Uh, Captain, can you tell me uh, exactly when you realized that the ship was in danger of not making land, of not making Bermuda? Well, after... <coughs> after uh, an hour and a half to two hours of searching for the island, we realized if we didn't find it, there was no possible way of returning to the mainland. In fact, we couldn't have spent more than uh, 20 to 30 minutes in the area before turning around and be able to make the mainland again. But we were very sure uh, they have uh, good radio facilities on the ground there to give you uh, homing uh, headings. And uh, they, in the past, they have always been very good. And on this particular case, they were good, but we had uh, radio failure. Uh, semi-radio failure. Is that what caused you to be lost, the semi-radio uh, failure? Uh, just contributing. Navigation and uh, semi-radio failure. How about the weather? The weather <coughs> was overcast. Uh, very seldom did we see any blue sky. It was uh, practically continually overcast, uh, around 3,000 feet. And on the at the time of at the time of uh, ditching itself, the ceiling was uh, roughly 1,500 feet with about a 35 to 40 mile an hour wind blowing, giving uh, white caps on the tops of the waves. Uh, also, um, 
the waves, although Colonel Grable said they were 20 feet, they were fully 40 feet Is that right? in height. That's right. That's uh, what, that is what caused the tail of the aircraft to break off immediately. Break in two. That's right. Broken right in two. That's right. Well, tell me, uh, how does it feel to be in the hospital bed now, Captain? Very good. The best feeling, though, was when we got on board the... Um, Canadian destroyer. Canadian destroyer, and they were certainly a, a fine bunch of fellows. Really treated your role, treated, isn't they? They sure did. And it's a great feeling to lay in this nice, clean, comfortable bed in this nice hospital, isn't it? It sure is. What do you think of the hospital? It's very nice. That's right. Good. And the best of luck to you, Captain. Thank you very much. Right. And here's another of the 18 survivors here at the hospital, the station hospital, at the field of Bermuda. Would you tell us your name, Frank? Uh, Captain Joseph J. Petrosino. And where are you from, Captain? Uh, Providence, Rhode Island. East Providence, that is. <laughs> and what were your duties aboard the B-29? I'm the navigator on that ship. And you can tell us something about the weather that closed in. Do you remember uh, how soon after you left the mainland of the United States, uh, the uh, weather really started closing in? Well, I guess at about an hour before dawn, uh, we had a complete undercast. Uh, there wasn't very much that we could see. I guess it was nine-tenths cloud coverage. We started to go down through it and uh, flying pretty low. I don't know what the exact altitude was. It was close to a bit under 1,000 feet, I should imagine. Were you able to see the ocean at, uh, uh, at, at that altitude? That, that we could see the ocean fine. Uh, where were you in the ship when the when we when we ditched? Yes, when you. I was right there at the navigator's table. We had chopped off most of the table. I wedged myself in between the uh, fuselage and uh, a portion about eight inches of the table. Padded myself up with a heavy flying jacket put my feet up against the uh, forward gun turret and uh, just uh, looked out the window I have there just waiting for the uh, crash. Uh, it, was, it was a perfect landing. I think if the colonel had landed uh, on land with his wheels up, uh, there wouldn't have been anyone so much as scratch. Oh, the seas were pretty rough. I guess he had uh, maybe 40, 40 foot waves. Mm -hmm. You say that your table was cut in two. As a matter of fact, I remember speaking with one of the um, crewmen aboard a B 29 who reported seeing uh, uh, portions of your table, as a matter of fact, floating among the debris. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. As a matter of fact, it was one of the first axe. ones that he saw. Mm -hmm. He used a hand axe just to chop it off. Just broke it in two. Just broke it yeah. on Braced a diagonal. You braced yourself expecting the crash. Which well, we know, of course, it was coming. Uh, how long did it take you to get from the foundering B-29 to the life raft? For a matter of seconds, there were four others who preceded me out of the astro turret. Uh, I was the last man out. The water was coming in pretty heavy at the time. Uh, oh, I'd kiss it about 30 seconds at the most. As I left, I pulled the uh, emergency handles of the life raft. Floated the life raft, okay. What do you expect to be going home, Captain? Oh, not too long. I get to take fine care of it. Indeed, like they it. will. Look. Best of luck from Thanks all of us to you. Thanks a minute, Captain. You have heard Edith Mezerand and Charles Warren, mutual news correspondents, with a recorded on-the-spot report of the B-29 crew rescue off the coast of Bermuda. The two men who died when the airplane went down were Corporal Raymond Bright of Arlington, California, and Private First Class Robert Dobson of Decatur, Illinois. Some of the survivors include these men, Lieutenant Colonel John Grable of March Air Base, California, Lieutenant Ernest Oliver of Abilene, Texas, Captain Joseph Petrosino of East Providence, Rhode Island, Lieutenant Leonard Culbertson of San Francisco, Lieutenant Ralston Bennett of Crystal City, Missouri, Staff Sergeant John Harris of Braddock, Pennsylvania, Staff Sergeant Perry Alfred of Greenville, South Carolina, Staff Sergeant Charles Cox of Riverside, California, Staff Sergeant John Birch of Los Angeles, Technical Sergeant William Johnson and Master Sergeant Roy Coulter, both of Beverly Hills. This has been a special broadcast prepared in Mutual's New York newsroom and featuring reports transcribed from Hamilton, Bermuda by Mutual correspondents Edith Mezerand and Charles Warren. Ron Dunn speaking from the Mutual newsroom in New York.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.